about option contracts. So in continuation with the lecture on option contracts where we had discussed about um, that there are two types of options call option and put options and uh, there is a strike price premium and then there are option writers. So option writer will have a different uh, viewpoint of looking at option contracts as compared to an option buyer. Then there are three uh, terms which we commonly use that whether option contract is in the money, out of the money and at the money based on which we decide whether an option contract will be exercised or not exercised. There can be four different positions in which option contracts can be studied. One can be long, uh, I mean long position and short position and with respect to long and short positions there can be uh, you know long call or long put. Now let us talk about, we have already discussed about a long call contract, let us talk about a short call. So let us assume there is a short call contract, so whenever there is a short call contract, so the idea is that uh, the seller of a call contract, so seller of an option means someone who has the, uh, who has the right to sell and he has, he, the seller of the call option, he has sold his right to sell to someone else. So in that case, that seller of the option contract will have, uh, uh, because he is selling the call option, so he will receive some option premium. So that option premium which he will receive is going to be his uh, income and is going to be the minimum profit which he is so let us take this example that there is one European call option with an option price of $5 and a strike price of $100. So the strike price for the contract is 100 So in case of this option, uh, the option price is $5 which the seller of the option will receive in, uh, in the, from the contract. K is the strike price or the exercise price of the contract and let us assume in future at the time of expiry of the contract, if the prices go up. Now as a seller of the call option, the right to sell is given to somebody else. So the right to sell of this option contract is with the buyer of the option contract. This seller does not have the right to decide that whether he will, I mean uh, whether the exercise, uh, contract should be exercised or not. Let us say if the prices go up. So the other party who is the buyer of the call option, he has the right to uh, buy. So if in the market the price will go up, anything beyond 100, definitely the call option will be exercised and as a short call owner, uh, this particular uh, person will have to exercise the option. So his losses are unlimited. So that is why the higher is the difference between the strike price and the spot price. So if strike price is, uh, uh, the, the spot price is greater than the strike price. So the option will always be exercised. So the option contract will be exercised in that case. But if the price goes less than 100 in the uh, spot market, so if the market price for the underlying asset reduces to 90 or to 80, so in that case the other party, the buyer of the call option will not exercise the contract. So in that case, uh, the short call owner will have a a price which is uh, the, the minimum profit which he has earned from the contract. Third scenario can be a long put contract. In case of a long put contract, 
we are looking at a put option where the uh, put option is to be So in case of a long put contract, the idea is that the buyer has purchased right to sell. So in this case, the right to sell is with the buyer. So as a buyer of a right to sell, if in future the market price will uh, increase than the exercise price, so the option contract will definitely be exercised. Now let's take this example. What is the profit from buying a European put option? Where the option price is $7 per share, strike price is 70 for 100 shares. Suppose the current price is $55. And now let's see what happens in this case. So uh, the strike price is 70 as a buyer of the right to sell. So this person would sell the contract, it will be profitable. So he has paid option premium first thing first. So he has paid minus 7. That is the minimum uh, uh, option premium price which he had to pay for buying a contract which is strike price of 70. Now, if in the market, the prices goes, goes down, let's say. So if the price goes to, if the current stock price is $55, so it is beneficial for this person to, uh, this buyer to sell the contract in the um, options market, then his profits are going to increase. So if the spot price, so, so we would say that the option contract is in the money, if uh, the exercise price or the strike price is greater than the spot price. So we will say in the money. So this contract will definitely be exercised. Larger is this difference, greater would be the amount of profit uh, the put option buyer can have. But if the prices goes, let us say reverse, that means the spot price is greater than the strike price. So in that case, option contract will never be exercised because the other party, the, 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 this person will think that he will uh, rather sell the product in the open market rather than exercising the option. So this is out of the money. So such a contract is known as out of the money option contract. Fourth scenario can be a short put contract. In case of a short put contract, we are looking from the perspective of the put option which gives us right to sell as a seller of the put option. So as a seller of the put option, uh, you are selling the right to sell to someone else. So that means as a seller of the put option, you have received some option premium which is your minimum income. So this minimum income is the, the, the price which you uh, have received as a minimum income. So the put option price is $7 and the strike price is 70 Here K is 70 Now the other party will take the decision because he is the buyer of the put option contract. He has paid you the price, uh, the $7 as a minimum price for option premium. So he will decide that whether in future uh, the option contract will be exercised or not and whatever he will decide that as a put option seller you have to abide by it. Now let us say if the market price goes up. So if spot price is greater than the strike price, the uh, put option buyer will not exercise the contract. So it is out of the money. So the option contract will not be exercised. But if, and you will receive a minimum profit of $7. dollars 
if exercise price is greater than the spot price in that case it is in the money. So, as a in the money contract larger is the so let us say if the price goes to 50. So, if spot price is 50. So, in that case the other party will definitely exercise the price uh, the exercise the option and your losses will be unlimited. As a seller of the put option contract your intention is or your observation about perception about the market is that the market uh, will not go down and that is how you want to earn a profit from uh, writing a sh uh, short put. So, basically if this whole discussion whatever we have done till now if we try to look at the payoffs. So, your payoff from a option contract would be so if K is treated as a strike price and ST is the spot price at the time of expiry. So, long position in an option contract will be maximum of so maximum of the two terms. So, uh, the, the payoff will be calculated as spot price minus the uh, uh, strike price or 0 whichever is a higher value and payoff from a short position in European con call, con call option would be maximum of whichever is a higher value spot minus exercise price or 0 or the minimum of uh, you know exercise price minus spot price or 0. In case of a long position in a put option. So, in case of a put option we look for the reverse if you even logically try to solve it using that equation and the uh, logical understanding then also you will be able to uh, do it. So, it is maximum of uh, exercise price minus spot price or 0 and in case of a short position in call option we look at maximum of uh, strike price minus the spot price. So, this is how your payoffs from different strike price uh, with, the, with different strike price and the uh, spot prices at maturity and the four types of long call and short call and long put and short put will look like in a summary. Now, let us talk about properties of stock options. What kind of uh, what are the features or what are the uh, important things that impact the stock option prices. If we look at the stock option prices and basic equations we would talk about uh, some of these terminology. So, there is a European call and an American call uh, call and put options. So, the European call options would be denoted by small uh, c and small p would reflect the European put option price. Capital C and capital P will uh, reflect the American option prices call and put. K is the strike price, SO is the spot price today, ST would be the stock option price at maturity, D is the dividend, R is risk free rate of return with continuous compounding. Uh, sigma is denoted as the volatility of the stock price, T is the life of the option. So, these are the terminology which we are going to use for further equations which we are going to use regarding option contracts. Now, let us talk about what are the factors or variables that affect the option prices. If you look at the option prices, they are affected by various uh, you know features or factors. Now, what are these? So, how will now we are talking about for your understanding I am telling we are going to talk about option prices. So, these are option premium prices we are going to talk about. So, there is a strike price for every option contract or the ex exercise price or uh, maturity price or right the strike price. Now, the strike price for a contract is defined that at the time of maturity at what value it will be transacted. Then for every uh, option contract there is a premium price. It is the premium price which is fluctuating or which is moving uh, uh, up and down throughout the day in the market when we are looking at the options market in India. 
So it's all about what price should we keep for the option pricing. So at what price should a call option which is uh, you know uh, expiring at a strike price of let's say 500 so what should be the option price if it is one month maturity if it is two months maturity or three months maturity so what all matters is that what is the price of the option premium so whether the option premium is costly or whether the option premium is uh, fairly priced is it profitable for you to uh, you know go for uh, buying or selling an option contract whether it is call or put or take a position in the option contract based on what is the option premium price going on. So when we are making strategies like we are making strategy related to hedging or speculation or uh, arbitrage we look at the option premium price because it is the upfront fees which we have to pay. So that is why this option premium price is very significant when as a uh, speculator or as a trader in the option market you are taking a decision that whether you have to uh, buy a particular contract or sell a particular contract or whether the contract is fairly priced that means whether you will be able to earn a profit uh, from the uh, strategy or not. So that is why it becomes important and uh, so these uh, the, the columns in the variables talk about European option, European call option price, uh, European put option price, small p, capital P is uh, uh, this is American call option price and this is American put option premium price. So what are the factors that affect these option premium prices that is an important uh, you know discussion or important topic to be and to understand so that you have some clarity when you are actually investing in the market and looking at uh, taking a position in the option contracts. So what are the factors that affect it? Uh, this table is a summary table which reflects it. So SO which is the spot price at the beginning. So at any point of time there you will find that there are three option contracts available for the same underlying asset and each of them have a different strike price. So there can be for three contracts there can be n number of uh, uh, strike prices for which the contracts are available. As a trader or as an investor uh, in the market you have to take a position you have to find out that which contract you want to buy and whether the price is fairly priced or it is highly priced or how you have to I mean you should uh, uh, go for investing in it or taking a position in the market or not. So if we talk about the spot price in the beginning. So you will find that if the stock uh, the, there is a positive relationship between this plus sign shows that there is a positive relationship between the call option price European and American uh, with the spot price. So if the spot price is higher you will find that the option premium price for such contracts is higher as compared to those option contracts which were the spot price or the current market price is low. So there is a positive so if the spot price will go up or if there are contracts which are available with a spot price which is high you will find that the option contracts such option premium prices will be higher for call options but it is inversely related with the put options both American and European. That means if the spot price is higher for a particular contract so the option put option premium price will be lower for that. There is an inverse relationship between put option prices and the spot price of the underlying asset. Next comes the uh, strike price or K. This uh, strike price is inversely related with call options both the call options and uh, positively related with the put option. What does this mean that if you are looking at the pr uh, option premium price of uh, two or three contracts and you are comparing you will find that the option premium price for the contract which is uh, whose strike price is higher will be for, for such contract the call option premium will be low but the put option premium for those contracts which have higher strike price will be high. So higher the strike price higher will be the put option premium price but lower uh, higher the strike price. Uh, it is inversely related with the call option premium price. Now for uh, 
uh, the time period factor if you look at the time period. So, the contracts which are uh, for a longer duration you will find that they are costlier ones the call option premium price and the put option premium price for the American options is high in those cases. If you look at the standard deviation so or the volatility of the market if the market is volatile for the underlying asset you will find that for such contracts the call option premium price will be high for those contracts where volatility is high but will be low for those contracts where volatility is low. Uh, looking at the risk free rate of interest, so the risk free rate of interest again is positively related with the call options and negatively related with the put options both American and European. So, if the risk free rate of interest will increase call option premium price will increase and the put option premium price will decrease. What about dividends? Another factor that affects the option premium price is dividend which is declared on the underlying asset. So, if there is any dividend which is declared on the underlying asset it goes reverse with or there is a negative correlation between the call option premium prices for the underlying asset on which dividend is declared, but it is positively related with put option premium prices. Now, if we compare the American versus European options that how these will be priced because the prices for the same dated and uh, the same strike price and the same underlying asset American and options are different how it is determined. So, any option contract can never be worth more than the stock. So, stock value is upper bound to the option premium price. So, the European uh, call option premium price now here we are not talking about any other price we are talking about the premium price. So, C is premium price. So, it is the premium price of the uh, European call option. So, it can uh, the upper bound for the European premium price is it should be less than or equal to the spot price that is today it is very logical. For a European option the maturity of an option contract cannot be worth more than the present value of K today. The put, uh, put option price cannot be greater than the uh, present value of the future strike price the K the K which is the strike price if we calculate its present value how do we calculate present value e to the power minus R T. So, when we do minus R T exponential of minus R T is it will give you present value. So, an American option is worth at least as much as the corresponding European option you will find that the American option price is either greater than or equal to the European option premium price in both the cases of call option as well as put option. Now, let us look at that what should be the now uh, what we are talking about right now is we are talking about option premium prices. So, first we have discussed about that what are the factors that affect these option premium prices uh, right. Then looking at those factors now we look at that uh, what impacts. So, the option premium price will uh, you know work under a range. So, there will be a lower range and a upper range. So, now we are talking about the lower bound that is the lower limit and the upper limit between which the option premium prices will fluctuate. So, now we are talking about right now we are talking about European call option prices where no dividend is paid on the underlying asset. If you remember this formula uh, k, to k multiplied with k is the strike price which is multiplied with uh, exponential of minus r t that means we are trying to calculate the present value of the strike price. So, the lower range for a European call small c is European call. So, for a European call option price is equal to spot price in the beginning minus the present value of the strike price. So, that is the lower limit from where the uh, you know call option premium price will start building up and 
so it is maximum of spot minus present value of the strike price or zero so whichever is higher that means it cannot be a negative value definitely you have to charge some price for the option premium so let's take this example there's a european call option on a non dividend paying stock when the stock price is 51 so spot price in the beginning is 51 strike price that is k is given to you as 50 at the time of maturity which is 6 months this free rate of return is 12% if you have to calculate the lower bound of the option premium price so it should be 51 minus 50 multiplied with exponential of rate of interest that is 12% into 6 months right so you get 3.91 so that means the pricing option premium pricing will start from 3.91 and then we can calculate the upper bound as well now if we have to calculate the lower bound for european put in in case of a european put option so how we can do it it is present value of the strike price minus spot price so it is maximum of this difference or zero let's take this example a european put option on a non dividend paying stock when the stock price is 38 so s0 is 38 strike price is 40 time to maturity is 3 months risk free rate of interest is 10% if we have to calculate the lower bound it is present value of the strike price minus spot price so it is 1.01 is the lower bound for the put option premium price and upper bound it cannot go beyond the strike price now if uh, so there is a concept called put call parity so in case of a put call parity we say that you know uh, call option premium price this relationship is that call option premium price plus strike present value of the strike price is equal to put option premium price plus the spot price today so this concept says that the value of a european call with a certain strike price mummy your voice is not clear my voice is not clear okay now uh, uh now am i audible is it okay now i'm audible but not clearly okay uh in case there is some difficulty i don't know what i can do with this internet but uh, if there will be some mismatch in the voice clarity uh, you can watch all this on the video as well so whatever you will miss so let me continue speaking because i can't do anything with this internet as of now it is working but i don't know why there is a trouble but uh, you can always watch this video i think in the video you will find the voice clarity better thanks for telling me uh so this relationship talk about that uh, you know the european call price with the Uh, can be derived from the value of the european put price with the same strike price and the exercise date so this is basically a put call parity relationship between the call option price and the put option price now let's take another example in this case there's an american call option on a non dividend paying stock with a strike price of k is equal to 20 maturity is 5 months and is worth 1.5 so american call price is 1.5 suppose that the current stock price is 19 and risk free rate of return is 10% now if we have to calculate that you know whether the uh, stock is fairly priced or the contract is fairly priced or not uh so the call option price has to lie between the difference of the two prices 19 and 20 one and 
the formula which we have discussed spot price minus the strike price present value which is equal to 0.18. So, the call option price which is given to you as 1.5 this P or the put option premium must lie between 1.68. So, you add 0.18 into this and 2.50. So, you add the upper bound the upper limit of 1. So, this should be the level between which the premium price should fluctuate. In other words, the upper and the lower bound for any American put with the same strike price and expiry date is given as this. Now, if within this range the premium price is lying which is 1.5, you can always or whatever is the premium price going on. On the basis of that you can take a decision that whether you want to continue with this or you want to get into this contract or not based on the premium price. Now in case of an American option there is an option or choice that you can exercise it early. So usually you will find that American option can are exercised early. An exception to this is an American call on a non dividend paying stock which should never be exercised early. But American put options should always be exercised early if it is sufficiently deep in the money. Deep in the money means that there is good amount of uh, you know profit margin in between uh, or the difference between the strike price, the spot price and the strike price. What is the reason why an uh, you know call option should not be exercised early? Because no income is sacrificed as you have paid for the call option share price at the end. So, during that time the amount uh, you have earned is the interest and holding the call option provide insurance against the stock price falling below the strike price. Now, what is the impact of dividends in case it is a dividend paying uh, underlying asset on the lower bound to the option prices. So, the call option European call option uh, price will be determined as spot price minus dividend minus present value of the strike price and the put value will be cal calculated as it will be greater than or equal to dividend paid plus present value of strike price minus the spot price. Now, in case there is no dividend which is declared in that case uh, this formula we apply for a European option where you know dividend is paid where there is dividend which is being paid. So, we calculate this call option price plus dividend paid plus present value of the strike price is equal to put option price plus the spot price. So, in case of European option where dividend is paid we can use this to define the lower limit and the upper limit between which the prices of the European or uh, American option will operate. That is all for now. Any questions please?